Hello, and welcome to the heart of Fiat Crucified Love. This week, we are going to talk about um, this book that my translator in Pakistan wrote. It's called Memoir of Grace, and it's by my translator, Akif Shahzad. I don't know if I'm even saying it correctly. Um, the Children of the Cross, which is the apostolate that I started and really kind of exploded over in the Middle East of children's prayer groups um, where children meet once a week or once a month and they pray for priests and persecuted Christians. And there's all sorts of just incredible things going on in Pakistan right now through the books that we've sent. And so Akif, um, gathered all of this up in a wonderful book. If you don't have it, I recommend you get it. It's called Memoirs of Grace, and it's full of all sorts of colored pictures um, and testimonies. So it's really beautiful. And then I also want to talk about the Fiat Foundation, which is something I just started. And um, it will be the means of us to continue this work in the Middle East and elsewhere. So it'll just kind of be um, a podcast where I share from my heart <laughs> and I read kind of some excerpts of this. Um, it'll be really beautiful. Sometimes we don't have the eyes to see what God wants um, to do in our lives or that he's actually already doing. Sometimes we're blinded by this world's kind of vision. And so we have to ask the Lord to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see with his eyes um, what it is that he wanted us to do. You know, I never would have ended up working in Pakistan if I had thought humanly. <laughs> I never had a connection to Pakistan and I love um, those who suffer for the Lord, but I didn't have um, like any natural connection or, you know, way to help the people over there. Um, even the knowledge of their suffering, so that that gives birth to a desire to help. And I remember when I started to publish my books, my um, publisher said, well, just run through any door that the Lord opens. And the doors that I thought he would open um, remain shut because people's hearts were kind of shut. And um, then God just made a way in the desert and he threw open these doors I would never have imagined. Um, and he is doing incredible work in the Middle East and North Africa and now into Central America. Um, and it's a path that I only discovered by saying yes, little yeses along the way. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. We're going to start with a prayer and the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Enkindle in us a fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we will be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. I 
want to see you. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing hope. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We want the eyes of our hearts to be opened. We want to um, not only be able to see like Christ sees, but then to live like Christ lives. You know, the way that we see is the way that we think, right? It's kind of like the same thing, like the eyes of your heart. It's like the way that you, your perception of the world that's around you. And what you think about is how you live. That's why, like, if you watch a bunch of violent movies, you know, when I'm a nanny, if the kids are watching a bunch of violent stuff, the kids are pretty violent because you act how what you think about, right? And what you see affects the way that you think. So as broken humans, we have our own human judgments and we have our own misperceptions of what we see in this world. And Jesus came with his crown of thorns and he suffered the passion to purify our minds, right? He came to open the eyes of our hearts so that we would see through the divine love and life and truth that he places within us. And then when you have a correct perspective on the world, a divine perspective, then you live accordingly. And God can do incredible miracles. You know, this world is full of so much pain, so much superficiality, so much wasted time. Um, people keep their focus on things that, that fall away. There was a very good friend of one of my sisters that died last night. 
He's young. He's 42. It happens. And suddenly everything that you feel like in this world is important isn't, right? It's important that when we live, we keep that divine perspective that we were created in love, by love, for love, right? By God, for God. And that we fall in sin and there's a lot of bad things that can happen. But that Jesus came and he died on the cross to save us. He rose from the dead and that we were created for heaven. So all of these things that pass on earth are nothing, right? Grudges that people hold on to. Like when you die, you're going to have a choice, Jesus or not. And he is loving and merciful and he's going to have that brother of yours that you never really liked sitting there. You got to embrace him to get into heaven, right? Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's somebody else. But there's no really room in this world for unforgiveness or grudges. What does this all have to do with my podcast, right, on this book? Well, th these are lessons learned and lived powerfully in um, Pakistan by the underground church there. And they live with this perspective. They're constantly in the shadow of death. I remember when um, the first printer that we were using died and there were some struggles going on over there. And I said to Akif, to my translator, are you sure that you want to do this? You know, I don't want to put you or other people at risk, but I would love to share the message of the gospel in this new way, this new breeze of the Holy Spirit with your people. And he said, Mary, to be a Christian in Pakistan is certain death. But you are giving meaning and healing and purpose and courage to our death. Imagine living your life always under that shadow of knowing that you could be killed for what you're doing, right? So often people here in the United States, they falter if they're looked at the wrong way, right? You know, oh, you don't, you know, my, my boss doesn't like something. I better, you know, go along this path that everybody else is, right? Or, um, you know, my neighbor might think funny about me, so I'll just do what the crowd says. And people compromise their morals very quickly because they're afraid of other people, Right? I mean, they've done scientific experiments on how, um, I forget what the percentage is, but way over half of all people would even torture and kill another person if they had the pressure put on them by um, a group of people around them. That's awful. And yet we have this beacon of light in the world in the Middle East. And you would think of, you know, um, all of the bad things going on over there. But the beacon of light are the heart of the Christians who live willing at all times to risk their lives in order to live the gospel, in order to believe in Jesus and to love his mother and to live according to his teachings and to go to mass and to practice the sacraments. They're constantly, their lives are at risk. But it's interesting because then they live properly they're not distracted. Like they know what's important in this life and what isn't. And I think about that newly canonized or beatified um, Akash Bashir, a young man in Pakistan. And he actually was a student of my translator. And he went to the church to protect it from the Muslims. And when the Muslim came with a suicide bomb attached to him, he went and he tackled him and he gave his life to save thousands of people in the church. Why? Because he knew that this life meant nothing in comparison to eternity. And so it's really incredible to hear these stories of these persecuted Christians in the Middle East because they have that perspective right. They have that mind of Christ. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you the way that these people see you, to trust you, to love you the way that they do. And, you know, I never would have done the work that I do there if um, I hadn't been open to the Holy Spirit. Because, like I said at the beginning, I didn't naturally have a knowledge of, an affinity towards, a connection with Pakistan at all. 
I remember once many, many years ago, the Lord asking me to pray for them for something. So I prayed for them once, like once. <laughs> and then I remember on a bus, well, probably about 10 years ago now, maybe eight, I met a little, pa a little girl from Pakistan. They were immigrants to Chicago. We had a neat conversation. But that was it until I started to write and publish my books in the United States. And my publisher said, just go through whatever door the door Lord opens. And um, a lot of the people that I thought here would respond to me didn't. And yet Akif reached out to me from um, Pakistan. And he said, can I translate your books? And I, I did vet him, <laughs> you know, like I had him translate things and then I contacted priests I knew here that sp spoke Urdu and I, some of the Dominican priests and I um, asked several different people to look at his translations and they said it was incredible, it was phenomenal. And little by little, we started to work together to the point where I completely trust him and any work I do in the Middle East, I now do through him. He has good judgment. He was formed um, in the church. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about him. He talks about him here from his family and um, he had never left his village, I think until he was 14. He came from a very small little area there. And um, he ended up studying with the Franciscans for a long time. And he even completed the novitiate and he had wanted to become a priest, but his father died and he ended up having to come home um, to help with the family before he was ordained. But he was formed with the Franciscan spirituality and their formation for years and years. And then he ended up working with the Columbans, which is another religious community. So he has some very solid spiritual formation and he did a lot of translating of books. They even sent him to Ireland for a little bit. Um, and I'm sure that's why it was all part of the formation that God, like that natural formation that God does when he has a supernatural work for you to do. That was the foundation um, that God was laying so that then he could translate my books. And it's really beautiful in here. He talks about how no book had ever touched his heart the way mine did. He felt the Holy Spirit powerfully. He couldn't put them down. He would work th through the whole night not sleeping and he would weep as he translated because the books were medicine to the soul of the people suffering in Pakistan. Um, and then eventually with his help, we've been able to get 2,000 books into Afghanistan and we're printing again another 2,000. Um, and with his help, we've even sent missionaries into those Christians in hiding um, over in Afghanistan. So the work has been incredible. But the first book that we did was The Holiness of Womanhood. And that book spoke so powerfully to the people over there because women are so abused and so looked down upon. And we started to receive many um, testimonies from people saying, I never wanted to be a woman and I hated who I was or you know I had been raped or attacked um, because of my gender here and I suddenly have healing from it because of that um, and it was the first time that they ever heard the Catholic teaching of the holiness and dignity of the vocation of women um, so it's just really beautiful. I'm looking for um, his exact emails on that. Um, and so as we printed it, he, they started to gather um, groups of illiterate women and they would read the book out loud to them. So one book would reach 100 women. And Akif started a whole ministry where he would travel around and give retreats and conferences on these books and teach people and then leave the books and they would continue with prayer groups. Um, and eventually they formed these prayer groups of children of the cross, which are children who gather every week to pray. And it's all um, brand new. I mean, they've never ever had... Um, prayer groups like this, especially with children. So I'm just looking here. I 
and he got it then into Afghanistan. Um, after we did the holiness of womanhood, we did out of the darkness, which is on the um, passion of Christ. And it brought so much healing to these people who so often are called to live the passion of Christ. Um, once again, they found healing of their own darkness and hopelessness and wounds. Um, you know, some of them had family members that had been killed by the Taliban or different things. And they found strength through reading about the passion of Christ and the holiness of uh, in out of the darkness. And so it would gradually, you know, first they started to look at women a little bit different. And then they started to look at their own suffering a little bit different. But they could do it in light of that first book, The Holiness of Womanhood and the Idol um the ideal, not the idol, the ideal of Our Lady and her love. Our Lady has become so present in Pakistan in a new way through these books. And, um, you know, the title of this book is this icon that I painted of Our Lady of Pakistan. And we've printed a couple hundred copies of that icon to hang in the homes of the people there, which has been beautiful. But here is a testimony from Joshua. My name is Joshua Edwin. I'm 26 years old. I kept waiting for this Urdu book, The Holiness of Womanhood, for a long time. When I read it, I felt really my connection with my mother. I've experienced being born again. I was always wondering that something was missing in my life, and now I know what, that miss what was missing. Every day, I listened to news of young girls being raped, being forced to conversion to Muslim. I was really sad, and this book has given me hope. I'm going to bring this hope to other hopeless families. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to the writer of this book and the translator. I've decided I will be sharing the message with more than 100 women who cannot read. There are many poor women who want to read it but cannot afford it, so I will pay for some books for them. This book has given me peace and hope and as a man, and so how much more will it give to a woman? Thank you for the gift of this book, right? Then from another young lady, Michelle. Hello, my name is Michelle from Pakistan. I'm a medical student. I always wanted to read something which could give depth to my womanhood. Thanks be to God, my prayers are answered as I got this book in order to. I have met many young girls in the university who are looking for peace, hope, and the meaning of life. As a young girl, I was sad to hear that many girls said that they wished that they could be boys. Why? Because as women, they're not treated well. But this book has given me hope to bring hope to them. I read this book and today I read this book and today I contacted the translator again and shared my story with him. I was able to share this book with two other young girls and they kept crying. I asked them, but they couldn't give me an answer as to why. It is only today that they were able to tell me that this book helped them say thank you to the Lord for being created as a woman. Thank you to the writer who has brought us to the point that women are an image of God. Another one, my name is Solman Vincent. I am a student of the Franciscans. I am very active in the youth and the church activities. Once I was studying the book of Genesis in the church and the leader said that men and women were created in the image of God. He tried to explain this concept, but truly we could not understand. But when I read this book, I was able to understand that women really are created on, is in the image of God. Yesterday, I went back to that pastor and I said, today I understand the meaning of the image of God in women. I gave him this book to read and I encouraged my classmates in the church to read this book, especially the young girls. This morning after church, my pastor bought 10 books for the poor women who wanted to read it and couldn't afford it. Thank you very much for providing this, right? And then on Mother's Day, May 9th, 2021, 
What a beautiful Mother's Day gift to hear that God is using my little nothing book to touch and heal Catholics and Muslims and Christians of de other denominations. I wrote this, this introduction. But he wrote, Akif wrote, Greetings and wish you a happy Mother's Day. Three days ago, I received a call from a pastor. He doesn't belong to a Catholic church. He's another denomination. And he invited me to conduct a short session for a Mother's Day program. I said I would do it happily, and I asked him the purpose of the program. The pastor said that he has a group of young women in his church, and in this group, two women were raped about a year ago. Then there is a woman whose husband has been in prison because he was falsely accused of blasphemy. He's been in jail for more than four years. Then next, I was surprised to listen to him. He asked that I please share with my group from the book, The Holiness of Womanhood. I asked him how he had heard about this book. Then I came to know that a few months ago, this pastor was attending a prayer service in another church. There he heard a witness of three women who received hope, peace, comfort, and a kind of conversion from reading this book. So he took my contact number from those women and that's why he called me. Then I said yes and requested that he should also invite men because men also must listen to this. I believe that in Pakistan, many women are being deprived of their rights and dignity because of men. So I went there and I shared chapter two, woman as gift and chapter four, woman as mother. In the end, I asked them to reflect on the questions that are given. Believe me that the women who were raped had tears in their eyes. The, one of the questions was, what are the gifts of my body that God gave to me? How is my body a gift? And so these raped women were crying. I asked them to write their feelings and their papers were wet. Even men had tears in their eyes when they listened to them. At the end of the program, I saw a smile on those women on those women's faces and some hope. I promised them that I would give them more books very soon. We always knew that suffering is bad and a curse, but after reading your books, Mary, we know suffering is also a gift from God and a sign of love. And the book Out of the Darkness also was very powerful and um, was able to um, convert even Muslims. There's a story in here. I thought I just marked it. Um, Mr. Shahad Khan. And I, they sent me a picture of him and they said, here he is, a friend of mine. He died at the age of 46. For most of his life, he lived in a wheelchair. Since he didn't have opportunities to learn, he always had the wrong way of earning money. He was always suffering. He didn't accept his condition and the pain he went through was too much. I gave him the Urdu translation of Out of the Darkness. He read this book and eventually he converted to Christianity. He left all of his wrong ways. Ultimately, he accepted his pain and suffering and he accepted that God loved him. Earlier, he always complained that God did not love him. One day I got a call from his family that he was not feeling well. I was really surprised that when I reached his house, he requested for me to read a few passages from Out of the Darkness. He admitted that he wanted to hear from this book before he left the earth. I read a few passages to him with tears in my eyes. I shared with him about our projects in Afghanistan. He admitted that these books are important because they give life and give hope. When later I came back, I learned he fell asleep in the Lord. I thank God for his life, and I'm really thankful to God that Mary Kleska's books not only give life to people on their earthly journey, but also help them to prepare and make their heavenly journey home. This incident assured us that our project in Afghanistan is important and urgent. And a lot of what we do in Afghanistan, we have to keep silent. We have to keep secret but I can read a short email that he published in here. So that one is able to be shared. Um, 
once I published my book on Russia, A Heart Frozen in the Wilderness, The Reflections of a Siberian Missionary, a new missionary seed was planted in the hearts of the Pakistani people. And they wanted to go on mission. And one of the men responded. And when the Taliban took over and we printed my books in Dari, which is the language of Afghanistan, um, he was willing to sneak in the country with the books. And um, many times he was threatened and the books were confiscated. He was held at gunpoint and then he was able to continue on and distribute them. And we are preparing to send some more. So we do ask your prayers for this. But here's an email. Greetings. I just received a short but detailed note from Afghanistan. First of all, greetings from a Catholic family that I am staying with in Afghanistan. This family has read Mary Klaska's books, Out of the Darkness and the Holiness of Womanhood. This family, husband and wife, two children, and three friends that keep visiting them, are entirely thankful for these books. The wife is a nurse and she brought the book to other nurses in the hospital. She's done this work secretly because if someone from the hospital management comes to know about this, she'll be fired. She is reading this book with other nurses secretly and she said that among these nurses, there are Muslims as well. She witnessed that all the nurses who are reading this book cry with sorrow and happiness. One of the Muslim nurses from the group said that the teaching in this book is the true teaching. This is real life. We are dying every day, every second, and these books have given us light. That's straight from the gut of Afghanistan. We are dying every day, every second, and these books have given us light. The husband has given these books to a few teachers and those who he meets in the market we're doing this all very silently and secretly. A hidden church is taking shape. We cannot meet regularly because most of the time our activities are being watched. I shared with them about your group, the Children of the Cross. So the children from this family and their three friends' children and a few of the nurses' children meet secretly just to say a short prayer. Please convey a message to Sister Mary Klaska that her books are seeds of peace in this barren land of Afghanistan. Here the Taliban are always ready to kill others, but her books are giving the message of hope. Please tell Sister Mary that one day her books will convert people here, though a very long way is ahead of us to travel. But we have started traveling this path with her books. This Catholic family with the other friends and people are planning to focus on children so that the next generation will bring peace. Because it's very hard to preach to the adults here, it's also dangerous. But we are sharing these books with adults as well where we feel secure. Please tell Sister Mary that the hidden church has started. This hidden church this certain hidden church and other places where people pray secretly are always in danger. Only prayer can convert people. Praise the Lord for the first time the Children of the Cross is here in Afghanistan. The first group of Children of Prayer have been formed here, though a very small group, but it will grow. This Christmas we have distributed many books and I hope their feedback will come soon. The Catholic family would love to write Sister Mary Klaska, but they are afraid because their internet, emails, messengers, WhatsApp is always being monitored. And if someone knows what they're writing to someone in the United States, this can cause problems. But one day they will write. I have seen their situation, so I feel sharing pictures of these activities is too early. It can only bring them trouble. Please pray for us. We need prayers. But said, please you and Sister Mary, pray for me too. I need your prayers. God bless you more and God bless Sister Mary. These people are very grateful to Sister Mary. A few people here say that she is not Sister Mary, but a Mother Mary to them. I would only hope to be that face of Our Lady's love to those suffering there. And that the ministry of the Children of the Cross really started to take off 
Here's another email. Greetings of the Lord and Mother Mary be with you. Indeed, I had a very busy weekend. I really praise the Lord for all he's doing. I was able to say the rosary with the children of the cross, and I asked them to bring pictures for all of the persecuted people. You can see in one of the pictures, they really brought so many pictures that we had to choose only a few, but this shows their great faith in prayer. In one picture, a lady is leading the prayers. She prayed for all the people, especially those who are tortured because they're Christians. In another of the pictures, a man is leading a prayer. He also is leading the children of the cross. These poor children are so happy when they pray. In one of the places I visited yesterday, I told the children that we should pray for all the poor and persecuted. So one of the children from the group said that we also are in the same condition. And I said to her, then let's pray for ourselves as well. I showed a short movie to one group about the Blessed Mother. And then I also showed a documentary about persecuted Christians in my country. Then the good thing is that I was able to meet a group of Muslim leaders. They were all from big institutions and have their say. I shared your books with them. I also told them about facts and figures about what is happening in Pakistan. I told them that each year a thousand Pakistani girls are forcibly converted to Islam. Honestly speaking, it's very dangerous to tell these things, but I feel that somebody has to take the step. They listened to me, and one of the Muslim leaders was a professor at an Islamic university. He said he would like to keep this book in the university library, so I gave him a copy of The Holiness of Womanhood. The Holiness of Womanhood is in several Islamic universities in Nigeria and in Pakistan. So that's kind of beautiful. This, that is really true that every year more than a thousand girls are converted to Islam forcibly. forcibly. Then a sad incident happened a few days back. In the hospital one early morning, a Christian nurse was raped by three Muslims. A really sad accident incident. It is true that in my place, Christians are not safe, especially women. I am trying to reach that nurse just to tell her that we're praying for her. Your books have given me the courage to do something for my people in Pakistan. Your books are a source of hope and peace. Your books have given a purpose in my life to serve my community, and my people have found peace in your writing. This is God's will, his call for me to be the voice of my people. Thank you very much, and I need your continued prayers. And then another group that he had. Greetings and happy Sunday. I just got back from church. Today, once again, I was invited to a church to preach the holiness of womanhood. It was a deep experience. There were about 45 participants, and I think only 10 were men. The rest were all young women. I am sharing a few pictures of this activity. You'll have to get the book to see all the pictures. I gave them a brief introduction of the book, and I read a few chosen texts from the book. All the young girls were full of joy and wonder while listening to the book. There were a few mothers as well, and I could see their eyes with tears of happiness and gratitude. Then I divided them into groups. Group work is always amazing because in small groups, people feel it's easy to share their true feelings. I asked them to write and share what they were feeling before they listened to this book and what they're feeling after having listened to the teachings in your book. Their response touched me what they were feeling before they listened to this book. Women are not born in the image of God. God loves men more than women, and women have nothing to do with the plan of salvation. What they felt after they listened to your book, God created them in his own image. God loves them very much. We are helpers of God. A woman, Mother Mary, gave birth to Jesus. So all women are holy and can share Jesus with others. Women played and still play a vital role in salvation. At the end, many of the participants came to me and asked to learn more about the author, Mary Klaska. Thousands of prayers were offered for the writer of this book. In our culture, we mostly keep the Bible in a separate fixed place. 
women came and said that they would keep this book close to the Bible as this book is also life touching and changing. I also shared with the group about Children of the Cross. All of them promised to pray on Friday for persecuted Christians and all priests. And a few married women promised to send their children to the rosary. Mary, once again, thank you very much for enriching our culture with this spirituality. We did not know what to do, but your books have prepared a way for us. Thank you for being hope in our hopelessness. Thank you very much, Dr. Sebastian, for always being available to us. Thank you for listening to us and for your encouragement. Another email. Mostly I visit communities on weekends, but sometimes if I feel I'm needed, I cannot refuse. The same thing happened today. I received a call from a rural community. This place is located far from Lahore, my place. Indeed, it's a persecuted community. Poverty is beyond our imagination, and still many people here can read and write. Today, I was asked to share about the book Out of the Darkness. As you see in the pictures, I was war welcomed warmly. I was surprised to see the number of people, almost 70 of them, and only six were men. So when I saw such a great number of women, I also shared the holiness of womanhood. In this place, every house has terrible stories. They do not have enough to eat. They do not have equal rights, not even basic human rights. Being Christians, they're deprived of rights. A few can read and write. Still, they're only offered low jobs. Many of the women work in big houses where they are physically and psychologically tortured every day. They cannot even complain. I spent a couple hours with these women, young, old, and even children. The whole group, including me, had the Holy Spirit experience. Since many of them could not read, I had to read aloud for them. I also invited young women who could read to lead. At the end of Out of the Darkness and the Holiness of Womanhood, they were able to turn their tears into joy, their hopelessness into hope, their uncertainty into peace. And the very end, a group of young children did a cultural dance to say thank you to God for their life. Before this talk, this group could not imagine dancing. They were really sad and felt dark. After this, they felt the experience of coming out of the darkness. At the end, one decade of the rosary was recited for Mary Klaska for reason of her love for our people. I also mentioned In Our Lady's Shadow, and I promised that next time I would read that book to them. They, he also got copies of In Our Lady's Shadow, The Spirituality of Praying for Priests. And it's all about Our Lady's relationship with Jesus, the eternal high priest, and how we can pray for priests better. And um, it's been really powerful because in the Middle East, even the priests said, we didn't know lay people could pray for us. We thought the priests were supposed to pray for the people. So imagine, you know, starting that engine of the fire of prayer. That's what we've done there. And it was fed even more when my book, Mornings with Mary, a rosary prayer book, was translated and sent over there. Because they didn't have those prayers, the litanies that we know, the St. Michael prayer, the first place they've ever been prayed in Urdu in the Middle East is with my book. So it's like just starting that, um, that furnace of prayer and that is what's going to change the Middle East. Now it's 12.50 a.m. I want to write to you tomorrow in the morning, but one woman said, please just go home and immediately say thank you to Mary Klaska. So I promised them. Here are a few pictures from this Friday and Saturday activities. On Friday evening, I went to a place where once again, the majority of the people are being persecuted in one way or another. People, especially children and women, are physically and spiritually hungry. They're living in a certain fear. They really do not know what prayer is and the importance of prayer. They do not pray for themselves. So how can we imagine that they pray for others? So I went there with your book, In Our Lady's Shadow, The Spirituality of Praying for Priests. And it was good that one of my friends who's a priest also attended this session. The priest kept his promise. He promised he would join us whenever he had time. 
The pictures that I'm sharing of this community are not very clear. They don't have proper light in the church. Later, I reflected that they don't have light in their lives as well. I shared a few texts with them from your book. I'm feeling some peace that at the end, they were willing to pray for others and themselves. I asked them about the hardships and persecutions of their lives. They came with so many things, with tears in their eyes. Their stories also brought tears to my eyes, but God turned these tears into joy in the end. Then our group, the Children of the Cross, made a special prayer for persecuted priests and Christians. I asked them to draw what they were feeling, and in their paintings, fear and uncertainty was clear. The group is very active and good in prayer, so I've planned to bring this group, their parents have given me permission, to other places, and this will help encourage others. I am very delighted and humbled to share with you that since I was translating your book, A Heart Frozen in the Wilderness, I also ex shared this experience with the group. This little group of children themselves asked me to pray for the conversion of Russia. I never thought that in Pakistan, in my little town, in my little house, and in my other poor churches, we would pray for Russia. When children and parents were sharing about their hardships, I added a few stories from a heart frozen in the wilderness. People in both places said that the suffering of Russia and Pakistan are similar somehow. Then at the end, we had a heart-touching prayer. God bless you, Mary. I need your continued prayers as your books have proven a mustard seed in the hearts of my poor, simple, innocent, persecuted people. I need your prayer because it's a long way and I'm ready to travel this way with my people. Blessings. There's so many, one more here. There was a man 40 years old. He never came to church. I met him a few weeks back and invited him to come. So he came to attend. He said he was shy to come to church as he always felt that his sins were stopping him from receiving God's love. At the end of our program, he prayed with tears. You can see in one picture, this man kneeling down. He said, I did not know how to pray, but he experienced some, that some lady, of course, I believe it was Our Lady, the Blessed Mother, was guiding him to pray. He said during the reflection from the book, In Our Lady's Shadow, the spirituality of praying for priests, he received the courage to pray, and he kept praying for a long time. Then I also invited, I also visited small children who have basic needs at home but rarely experience God's love. I sat with them and prayed with them. When I was sitting with them, I was using references from the book, A Heart Frozen in the Wilderness. They felt this kind of love for the first time. Here, one miracle happened. As I was sharing a few thoughts about the condition of Russia, as I am translating A Heart Frozen in the Wilderness, so this book is always in my mind and heart, one lady who is 48 years old, she never got married, said that she would like to adopt a spiritual son or daughter. She said after listening to me read your book, she feels it's her responsibility that she must bring one or two children to God. So she wanted to spiritually adopt children. Just so incredible. I wish I had more than an hour. I'll share one more. That is, those were emails from eight, 10 months ago. I received an email last week. This is the last major email I received. And look at my children here. These are children of the cross of my prayer groups praying. Isn't that just beautiful? March 22nd, greetings. As I mentioned in my last email, a parish where people, including children, fasted. And then they invited me to spend some time there and share out of the darkness with them. It was my first visit to this place. It was my plan to share something from out of the darkness, but the plan of God was to share from the holiness of womanhood. When I was just starting, a very young girl asked me, who is Mary Klaska? Where is she? And this girl requested me to share something about Mary Klaska's life. I was really surprised, but of course happy to hear her question. Then I just sat down and I shared your life story. 
I started from your childhood when you last had a Russian ruble and how God led you to Russia. I cannot express in words the joys and facial expressions of the people, especially the children, where they were listening about your life. I shared a couple of your life-giving experiences written in a heart frozen in a wilderness. When I shared about your travels in Siberia, when because of snow you had to stay for hours in your car, and when someone gave water instead of gasoline, people were smiling, but they had tears in their eyes. Mary, our culture is different from your culture. So one of the children asked me that when Mary goes far places alone, doesn't she get scared? I was about to answer him when a girl answered for me. She said, Mary does not go anywhere alone. God is always with her. This parish is situated in a small village, quite poor and lacking in facilities. The majority of the people are poor and hopeless. People do not have enough to eat. This is amazing that in this small village, God used your life stories and your mission experiences. Your suffering, sorrows, and tough times in Siberia gave meaning to their suffering. You healed them. People are asking about your parents, and people are also praying for your parents. You do not know these people, but you have touched them. You have given them a ray of hope and joy. In this small village where young girls are not allowed to get an education, they are not treated nicely. These young girls are dreaming to follow you and become missionaries someday. This is all happening because of the Holy Spirit and the will of Our Lady. Thank you very much. It's just beautiful. So this is our mission. If you haven't gotten a copy of Akif's book, it's so incredible to read about the underground church. I only read a handful of what he has here and the pictures are just incredible. So it's called Memoir of Grace, Children of the Cross by Akif Shahzad. Shahzad, I think. And just at the end, I want to mention the Fiat Foundation. So I've had, you know, I have to collect money to provide these books for free or at cost in these third world countries, right? Um, we try to give them for free, but it's, you know, if there's somebody that can afford to give a donation or something, we do accept it because then we can print more. It, it takes some of that pressure off of me trying to always raise money. And we've done it just individually through people helping me. We tried GoFundMe and Facebook. I've got, you know, they've kind of cut me off a little bit. Instagram threw me off. So it's hard to get the word out and it's hard to have it all organized. So I started a non-for-profit foundation called the Fiat Foundation, changing the world one fiat at a time. And um, all of our fundraising to help in the Middle East, in North Africa, and we're working in Central America now. And then we've also provided books for seminaries and um, for bishops and religious here in the United States as well. Um, it will all go through this foundation. The mission of the Fiat Foundation, man, my eyes, um, is to provide funding for free Catholic materials to those physically or spiritually most in need, both here in the United States and abroad. The primary focus is on helping priests, foreign missions, and persecuted Christians through providing free copies of Mary Klaska's book, art, music, retreats, and catechetical materials. And then I go through in this little pamphlet and go through our goals for the year. So our big goal this year is the Central America Project. I have people in Mexico, Colombia, Belize, and Puerto Rico who would like to help print and distribute the Spanish version of the first three books I wrote. Um, and it's a little more expensive to do there than it is in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Nigeria. So we'll be doing a lot of fundraising to get the, um, the books into Central America. And then we do need to reprint a little bit more in Nigeria. The books have really converted um, a lot of Muslim women there's a picture of two Muslim girls with the holiness of womanhood, some seminarians there and a school where it was distributed. So we've done a lot of great work there. And then, of course, our Pakistan project that is ongoing. 
And with the work that we're doing in Afghanistan as well is very powerful. And the books that we distribute, I also kind of go through in this pamphlet. The first is The Holiness of Womanhood. Um, so it's just on the dignity and vocation of women. But in obviously you can hear in, in um, the Middle East, in India, I have it also being distributed in India. And in Nigeria, women are very demeaned. Um, even in Mexico, there is still femicide, which is when they kill a woman for being a woman. Um, so we're really hoping that this book can bring some healing and the Holy Spirit has sure been using it powerfully. So um, there have been stories of Muslim men who read it and convert, which if it was that easy to convert someone, the whole world should be converted, right? Just read the, the teachings of Christ. But the Holy Spirit's doing a real powerful work in the hearts of people there through that. And then the second book is Out of the Darkness on that interior suffering of Christ. Um, and those two books are also available in Polish. We're trying to find a Polish vendor too right now. So you can pray for that. Um, the third is In Our Lady's Shadow, The Spirituality of Praying for Priests that I mentioned. And it's about Our Lady's relationship with Jesus, the eternal high priest. The fourth is A Heart Frozen in the Wilderness, Reflections of a Siberian Missionary, and it's all about my missionary work, but it can really be a seed to inspire young people to be a missionary. The fifth is just Mornings with Mary, a rosary prayer group book, and it's just a book jam-packed with prayers. Um, we only have it in English and in Urdu for Pakistan, but eventually it would be nice to get these Prayers also translated into other languages. Their prayer itself is the impetus um, of any action of God. It's, it's so important. And then the last is raising children of the cross, the spiritual formation of children. So it goes without saying that that book has been powerful in forming um, the people who form my prayer groups of children, right? The spiritual formation of children. There's a chapter in this book um, about saints who were children. And it just goes through about 20 or 30 saints who were canonized as children. And that in particular has been very powerful for children to read. You know, they can be a saint too and to have those stories shared with them. So those are the six books. I am working on a seventh that I'm sure eventually will make its way overseas as well. Um, but those are the six books that we're working on for this year. So if you are interested in contributing, you can um, contact me. I have some contact information at the end of my podcasts. Um, and I can direct you as to where you could send a check to the Fiat Foundation. If you want a tax-exempt letter, you can make it out there. Or if you don't, you want it to be more anonymous, you don't want tax exemption, um, you can just get that money to me somehow personally. Sometimes people get me cash or a check or some, or like a personal check so that um, I can just pass that on. But I ask you to pray for this work and pray for the Fiat Foundation um, and pray for the work we're doing all over the world and pray for our work in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. I want to, at the end, um, read the description of this icon that I painted for the cover of it um, because there's a great meaning to that. So... Our Lady of Pakistan. While praying for the people of Pakistan and Afghanistan in October of 2021, this image came to my mind of Our Lady of Pakistan. So you can kind of look at it while I read it. She is a radiant light of love shining in the darkness of suffering in Pakistan. And she is spreading her light from Pakistan throughout the Middle East. If Jesus is our sun, Mary is our moon, reflecting his light. She is also called the star of the sea to help guide us on our path toward heaven. It is especially fitting to include these two symbols on the right of this icon of Our Lady of Pakistan, as they are also present on the Pakistani flag. 
The purple rose on the left of this icon is a symbol of the hidden fruit she is also bearing in Afghanistan. It is hidden as is represented by the dark purple flower and seemingly separate from Our Lady, and yet it is she who is bearing this fruit in the neighboring country. Our Lady is surrounded by all sorts of roses, dark purple ones representing hidden souls, white ones representing the innocent ones, red and pink representing those who suffer, and her heart is resting in a nest of deep red roses representing those martyrs who have been killed for their faith. The fiat on her dress is red for the fiat of her people in Pakistan has had to be one united to the blood of her son Jesus crucified. Her heart is pierced by the sword of sorrow and has four nails representing the nails in each of Jesus's hands and feet. The very center of her heart has a white rose representing the purest fruit that comes from her heart. Golden light surrounds her as rays of heavenly love radiate out from her, yet hidden between the rays are dark blue stars representing all the hidden souls in Pakistan, radiating her light in the shadows of that land. May Our Lady continue to protect, enlighten, comfort, and strengthen her special children, chosen children in Pakistan. So it's Our Lady of Pakistan. The book is called Memoir of Grace by Akif Shashed. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Isn't that awful? Um, and you can find it on Amazon, but get it and spread it and ask people to consider donating to the Fiat Foundation. Um, the Fiat Foundation will feed this work in the Middle East North Africa, Central America, the United States, and Poland as well. Hopefully, we're also looking for a Ukrainian and Russian translator for Out of the Darkness, so we can get that book to the Russian and Ukrainian people. It's been such an instrument of peace to those persecuted in the Middle East and Africa that we thought it would bring peace to those divided there. Thank you for all of your attention and for your prayers, for your kindness. We pray that the Lord continue to open the eyes of our hearts and help us to really hear what he's asking of us. My ministry depends on your prayers. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.